So I wanted to take a little bit of time today and just share with you a little bit about how we take this time, how do we create space for our own growth? Because sometimes that's the biggest thing. When I'm working with clients who are telling me like, hey, I want to move up in my career. I want to go and I want to accomplish all these different things. But I don't have the time and I don't have the space mentally to do this. I don't have the energy. I don't have the focus. I don't have any of these things. I am just trying to lead my team, do my job to the best ability that I can do it. Times are tough. We're trying to meet extra deadlines, tighter deadlines with less resources, less people. So oftentimes this is coming up, right? And I understand it's a huge struggle. And when I was working in corporate and then also trying to grow my coaching business, I was actually going through certifications, growing my team, growing myself, trying to find ways that I could continually evolve myself so that I could reach that next level that I was looking to do. It was a struggle. I'm not going to lie. It was a struggle. I had competing demands. We had tons of meetings. There were days where it was just like 14 meetings. I've got certifications early in the morning. I've got my son that I'm also trying to to be there and available for. And if you're a woman out there who's, who's really out there and you're just doing it all, I want you to know that you are definitely not alone and there is support for you and you can make it happen because I think that as women, that's what we do. We make it happen. And so I wanted to share this because I took last week off. I just took it off. It was 4th of July week. I actually sat down with a book coach that I'm working with and I spent three days just two hours, this poor thing, sharing with her my story. Two hours for three days sharing my story. And I'll be honest, it was it was a bit taxing for me too. And I look forward to being able to share in there what my story is about, what it is that I've gone through in my life, the things that I've overcome. Because to me, that is why I'm doing this. This is why I come out here every day. This is why I moved into coaching. This is why I enjoy helping people because I've gone through some crap in my life. And the biggest thing I think is that we can overcome it. And hopefully my story can share, you know, as that starts to come out and I'll start sharing some more about that. Hopefully that inspires others to continue to pursue your success, your growth, your greatness. Because if anything, this is what we're here to do. If you have something inside of you that's telling you that you want to do something more or you feel like you're stagnating or things are not moving forward for you in the way that you're hoping, then I encourage you to start taking those action steps now. There is not ever going to be a better time than just beginning. That doesn't mean that you have to just go full a full leap across a precipice that you don't know where it's heading. You can be strategic. But if you are um, ready and you're wanting that, then go forth and do that and provide for yourself because there will never be a better time than now. There won't. And I had to recognize that for myself. And so last week I took some time and I reflected on my life. I reflected on where I am, what I'm wanting in my life, what I want to attract more of, and how I continually want to evolve and grow. Someone asked me, then, why did you come up with the evolution coach as, as your title? Because we're continually evolving. I could say leadership coach. I could say executive coach. I could say life coach. I talk about all of those things when we're in session with my clients. But the biggest thing is that we are continually evolving. And so putting ourselves into some little bucket isn't going to serve us very well. And if you're looking to continue to grow, then you're going to have to stretch yourself and start thinking about yourself a little bit differently. And that goes back to finding time, finding energy, and finding focus so that you're putting your energy and your thoughts into the right things and the right space for yourself. At some point, we have to be able to say no 
to certain things in our lives that aren't serving us. Okay, I'm going to say that again. You have to be saying no sometimes because if you're saying yes to everything, you are saying no. In effect, you were saying no to something else because you can't possibly do it all. So think about how you can say yes to the right things and who you're in alignment to with and what. That's probably the biggest key takeaway that I took for myself last week, which is sometimes I am trying to be everything to everybody. I want to be liked. Of course, pleaser is my top saboteur. And I wrote about that in my newsletter this morning to, to in my email. If you have pleaser, if you have hyperachiever in there, if you are that high performer who is continually pushing yourself, improving yourself over and over and over again, and I see you, I see you out there, I am with you, then, then it's even most important that we can step back and we can recognize where we fit because we can't be everything to everybody, to every situation. We can't be the gap filler all the time because then we lose ourselves. We lose who we are. We lose what we stand for. We start becoming frantic. And that frenetic energy then plays back into our brains, how we show up every day, what we're focusing on. And so when we feel like we don't have enough time, oftentimes too, yes, Time is the one thing that we can't get back. But you know what's even more? Is our mental clarity in our space, our mental space. So maybe sometimes it's being able to carve out and set those distinctions for yourself with how you're using your time, with how you're using your energy and your focus and being incredibly deliberate about how you pour yourself into the right types of things. When I started to really recognize this is what I want to do with my life, this is what I want to grow in, this is how I want to start showing up, I had to recognize that I couldn't also be so emotionally invested in some of the decisions that my corporation was making at that time. Some of it I had to just remove myself a little bit and step back so that I could create the space for myself to continue to grow. So if I didn't do those things, I would be too wrapped up. I would be too emotional. I would be too invested in some of the things that weren't serving me. That didn't mean that I wasn't doing my job. I was. But when I, when I left my job, I had to go and do other things that weren't going to then continually drain me as well. Now, sometimes in our work, from a neuroscience perspective, we are more scattered than ever. You know, companies haven't fully understood how to leverage some of the tools and technologies that are out there, right? We've created efficiencies in terms of Slack and Teams and email, right? We've created these wonderful tools for project management, for how we can stay on track and stay focused. And now we have phones and we have texting. We have all of these different things. But one thing that wasn't taken into consideration, or maybe it was, was how our brains respond. And so this immediacy, this culture of immediacy and instant gratification and instant response is creating this cycle within all of our organizations, within all of our teams, within all of our leaders. Because we are scattered, we feel like we are continually having to, to bounce back and forth between message after message after message and meeting after meeting after meeting. And we never have the space to actually think. We are acting like robots and we cannot actually think. And so it's incredibly important that you can keep that in mind. And I often am working with clients on how do we set up systems and structures to put in place for deep thinking for that mental space that is necessary for you to do your job really well so that you can be creative, so that you can be innovative, so that you can actually do what our organizations hire us to do. 
but we are not functioning. And so more and more people are coming out like, I don't know, maybe I have adult ADHD. Maybe you do. Also, our brains weren't designed to function in this manner. Our brains weren't designed to be split in so many different ways where you have a text message come in. I mean, I've had like six notifications since I've been like, text message comes in, an email comes in, it all pops up. You have the red little dot, our brain signals to that. Slack messages are coming in. There's different channels, same thing with teens. And we are feeling more out of control than we ever have. And we're wondering what's wrong with us because we can't seem to keep on top of it. We can't seem to get our work done and we can't seem to find the time to do all the things that we're supposed to do, let alone try to do self-improvement and become better leaders and to rise up and have emotional intelligence and do all of the things that we're supposed to be doing. Is it any wonder that we feel scattered? Is it any wonder that we feel like we don't have control over our lives, over the situation, that we struggle with imposter syndrome? Because every day we're just shining a mirror in our face that, oh, we can't do it all. And we can't. And we never were supposed to do it all. And I want you to think about that. We're not supposed to be able to do it all. You are not supposed to know it all. As a leader, you are not put into that position because you have all of the answers. You were put into that position because you know how to help your team, because you know how to get the answers, because you know how to think strategically and help your teams and create those buffers and those systems in place so that they can do the jobs that they need to do. If you have all of the answers, where is the room for your team? Where is the room for growth? Where is the room for opportunity? And when we think we have all of the answers, we actually shut down innovation. We shut down creativity in our minds because we've now convinced ourselves that there isn't anything else. And that is a bias. So, Really challenge yourself this week if you're able to and think about, number one, how am I creating space for myself? How am I creating the space necessary to continue to, to grow and to rise up in your role, in your career, what it is that you're trying to create for your life? When I was working so diligently nights, weekends, trying to do all of these things. It felt like this endless hamster wheel and I didn't know how to get off. I just wanted to continue to, to be doing the things that I loved, to be contributing in a way that, that brought greater meaning and purpose for my life and for those around me. But when we're spinning and spinning and spinning on this hamster wheel, sometimes we have to just get off and we have to reevaluate and reassess where we're at and put in the necessary boundaries for ourselves, for our continued growth, for our teams. We are setting an example for our teams. If you're sending emails on nights and weekends, whether you tell your team not to do the same, not to follow your example, you're sending a mixed message. You're creating ambiguity. There's a lack of clarity. And that creates distrust. That creates psychological safety issues within our teams because we're sending, we're receiving and sending mixed messages all throughout the day. We want you to have work-life balance, but I need you to respond when I need you at the moment. Well, which one is it? We need to be more deliberate. We need to be thinking about how do we show up in ways that support our teams, support our organizations, and so that we can support ourselves. When we are just so strapped for time, we are so strapped for energy and focus, we have to be the ones in charge to get that back for our lives so that we can do the good work, so that we can be there for our team, so we can make that impact that we're looking to make in a greater way. 
So if this is something that you have been trying to think about, how do I do this? How do I create the space? How do I create the time? How do I create the mental energy and focus that I need so that I can be impactful, so that I can rise up, so that I can create the legacy that I really desperately want to make? It's your life and it will keep going either in the ways of the hamster wheel or you can get off and you can start taking back control over what it is that you're doing with your life. And I'll be honest, it's for the benefit of everyone involved because we haven't fully seen the repercussions of what it is that we're doing just yet. And so when we look at the way that our brains operate and we look at the way those dopamine factories work and those receptors are firing and the neurons are growing together, the neural pathways, it's so important that we understand what it is that we're doing to ourselves, what it is that we're doing to our teams, what it is that we're creating. And when we can take that time and we can take that step back so that we have the clarity and the understanding of how we really want to show up so that we can be really clear and be really deliberate and take back our power now you can be the leader that you want to be. That you can be the leader that can rise up. You can have your thought leadership and be innovative and be creative and be authentic. Be that leader who, you know, control is this more or less an illusion in some ways, but you can have control over you. And when you have control over you, now you are setting the tone. You don't have to respond to everything. You can set up schedules and systems for yourself. You can set up expectations. You can be the one to create cultural change within your organization that helps everyone involved. And really start thinking about what it is you want to create for your life. What is it you want to do? How can you make this possible? I could have told you a million excuses as to why I couldn't have done anything. But sometimes all it is is just finding the one thing that you can do and going forth and doing that. And then what's the next thing? For me, it was going to bed a bit earlier, waking a little bit earlier, having calls at six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning before I started my day. Certifications, same thing. Seven o'clock in the morning, I would choose the early ones or the really late ones. You can make it happen for yourself, whatever that looks like. If your will is strong enough, the desire is strong enough, and you create the space for mental clarity. If you're sitting there thinking that you can just do it all in the same haphazard, frantic manner that you've been doing it, it will be a struggle. And if you're looking for support, then reach out. That's what I work with clients on. That's what I'm here to help with. I have a full roster right now of people who are leaders in top companies who are facing the same issues that you are. Same ones. And if you think that because you work at Fang, XXX, whatever, that they're immune to that, they're not. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your life because we're all facing the same issues. And it's just a matter of thinking about new constructs and ways of thinking and ways of handling it to create the space for ourselves. So I encourage you, lead as the way that you want to lead. Be that leader. Roll for yourself. When you have dreams and you have passions, you inspire your team. Inspire your team, inspire your organization, and inspire yourself. You know, I did this because I, I wanted my team to continue to grow. I wanted them to have the careers that they aspired to have. And I also wanted to share that with my son. I wanted my son not to just see some frantic frazzled woman who was constantly working nights and weekends and had to cancel several things because 
you know, unfortunately, I was told last minute that we had another deadline to reach. I didn't want to continue. That's not the message I wanted him to see. And so I had to start making some shifts and some changes in my life so that I could be the mom that I wanted to be. I could be the leader that I wanted to be. And I could be the CEO of my own business. And it took some preparation and some strategy and some planning, but I did it. And so can you. So really sit down and think about what it is that you want. Create that space. And if you're ready and you want to talk to somebody, I encourage you, take some time, book a call. So I put the QR code on there. Scan it. Schedule a 15-minute chat with me. I'd love to get to know you, real you, a person not, you know, beyond the social media constructs. And see how I can support you. If anything, you'll walk away with some ideas of how you can create this space so that you can use the life that you want to be. All right. I look forward to talking with you. Please set up the time. And I hope this was valuable to you, if anything, to get you to think about where it is that you want to start taking your life moving forward. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I look forward to talking to you on the inside. Bye.